Today I want to talk about NPC Live's CHOP. How to create a new drum program out of your slices using non-destructive slices or a thing called pad parameters. A little bit about the differences between the two. We'll go over mute groups. So let's go ahead and get into that. Let's check it out. Okay, so starting off, I'm going to go ahead and hit menu, sample, edit. Now I got a loop here and I want to chop up. <laughs> So if you take a look at the bottom of the left of the screen in the corner, it says trim. If I press that, it'll change to chop. So this is the screen you want to be in in order to start chopping your loop up. And it's pretty simple. What you do is you press the first pad. And then when you want to do your next chop and hit the start point, you press the next pad and so on. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to chop this into four parts. So there you go, I got four chops. Now from here, what you're going to do is you're going to hold the shift button. And what I'm going to do is create a new program um, out of these four chops. And I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to press convert. Now this screen will pop up and it says convert to new drum program using slices. Now there's many other options in here, but right now I'm creating a drum program and I want to keep this basic. So the only two options we're going to look at is slice type. And right now I'm going to create a non-destructive slice. The other option we have is uh, pad parameters, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Later on I'm going to show you the way that I chop personally and I prefer, and I'll talk about pad parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and hit do it. Go out to the main screen. Um, select my drum program area and go ahead and turn over until I get my new drum program. So here's my new drum program. Note that it's uh, it by default just gets named whatever my sample is named. And here are my chops. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is mute groups because as you can see the samples on each pad cut each other off when um, pressed so. so usually to get this to work you need to go in to menu program edit go over to LFO modulation and now you have a thing called mute groups so what that is is you'll select a number and all the pads that are selected in that number will now be entered into a group and in this group these samples will affect each other by cutting each other off when pressed. The way that drum programs created by non-destructive slices actually work in the MPC Live when you convert them from your chops is actually not using mute groups. What it is is actually something different and if you go into master and you take a look at your polyphony. What the MPC Live does is create a drum program with all your chops and it sets your polyphony to mono. So essentially what you have is a drum program that is only capable of playing one note at a time and in effect these pads will cut each other off. So that's pretty cool. I will now go and show you guys how I chop and I will go over mute groups once again briefly and I will talk about pad parameters. The way that I chop is different because I don't like to have all my chops on one drum program separate from say my drum samples. I like to have that all in one place so that I can do some finger drumming and come up with some ideas. So I'm going to go in menu and program edit. Now I have some drum sounds here. And I want to lay my sample chops on these pads. Now I could do this individually. But what I want to do is um, show you a quick way that I can lay all, I can lay the same sample on all of these pads in one motion, really. So what I'm going to do is uh, click here on this icon at the top of the screen and select multiple. Make sure they're lit up. Close 
and now when I change the sample now that sample will be on all the pads but another thing I want to do is go back to mute groups again so LFO modulation and I'm going to change that mute group to one go back to samples so you can see now uh, my samples and all the pads and they're all on mute group one so they cut each other off so right now they all have the same exact start point now the non destruct slices that I chopped earlier for this loop can be accessed here and I can do this manually I now need to go and turn this multiple off change it back to current so that I'm only changing the parameters of one pad at a time so that I can now change the start and end points of each one of these pads um, I can show you here briefly that right now I can change the slices manually to the chops that I chopped earlier and I can make this a slice one make that two This is uh, um, chop one, two, three, and four. So the same exact slices that I used to create that uh, convert to that um, new drum program using non-destructive slices. So right now I'm using the non-destructive slices. I'm just manually changing those within my drum program. But what I want to do differently here, rather than use these non-destructive slices, I want to show you guys pad parameters. You see now if I change the endpoint of my slice number one, then it's going to affect the start point of my slice number two. And if I change that, see now, change that. So with non-destruct slices, you don't have individual control of start and end points for your slices. Okay, so if I change my slices to, say, pad, this represents pad parameter. I'm going to do this for all of them. And now what I can do, is, as you can see now, their start points are still... They are still um, all the same, but what I can do now is I have indiv individual control per pad. So the parameters of those pads, the start point, which I select manually here, um, can be um, can have independent control of each pad. They will not affect each other. So if I want pad one here, or say this is how I want this pad to start here, I can leave that there, and I can have it play out all the way. If I want to change pad two. I can do that. I can change uh, three. I can have this chop right here if I wanted to. And it doesn't affect the result of, you know, the adjacent pads there. Uh, so that's the way I like to chop. The reason I like doing this, one of the reasons is I like to have the full length of my sample. I want my, you know, my chop to end at the end of the sample loop rather than have, you know, the end point of my chop one end at the beginning of chop two. And it gives me more flexibility to do what I want. Just one of the reasons and just amongst that, I don't, I don't like to do the automatic new drum program from Slices. Just because I like to have everything here so that I can play around uh, with my beat and come up with some ideas. Alright, thanks again for joining me. That's all I got for you today. Wanted to keep it brief. That's a little bit for you on Chops and the MPC Live. Alright, so 
Uh, come back for some more tutorials. Uh, subscribe, like, and share, comment, and all that good stuff.